Now, the Artemis rocket launch is due imminently. This rocket is set to orbit the moon with no passengers on board this time. These are live pictures you can see here. It's going to be taking the first step towards taking humans back to the moon, possibly by 2025 and then later on to Mars. Scientists are hoping this will be third time lucky for the launch. They've had to bought uh, or abandoned two previous attempts. So there we can see the pictures at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Let's bring in Ariel Waldman, who's a NASA advisor, and she joins us now from San Francisco. Um, Errol, this is so exciting. I've been looking at that picture of that rocket for some time, uh, as have most of us. Um, how hard is it to do this? How hard is it to coordinate a successful launch? I mean, they call it rocket science for a reason over the decades, right? It's incredibly, incredibly difficult. There are so many different things that have to go right as we've been watching this launch and getting ready for it, an ethernet port went out and they had to get a new ethernet cable to get the rocket working and ready to go. So there's so many tiny things from little cables to the chemicals to all of the reactions that need to take place in order for this rocket to launch. So it's an incredibly complex system. OK, uh, I'm no rocket scientist, but an Ethernet t cable is just the Internet, right? It lost its Internet connection. Yeah, it lost its Internet connection. It was really important, actually, because it was a mandatory uh, thing that it needed in order to be able to abort the system correctly. And so having all of those sorts of connections so that the rocket is able to abort if we need to abort makes it a safer rocket. So actually an ethernet cable can be an incredibly important part of a rocket system, it turns out. <laughs> so it turns out. Um, the other thing I noticed or I've heard about is that they're fueling more slowly this time. How does that help? Yeah, so fueling slowly is part of really taking everything in caution. And that's what NASA is so great at, is really making sure that they're doing everything correctly, taking their time to do it. Because if you don't take your time and you rush through any of this, that's when accidents can happen. So by taking their time in fueling and in checking all of these systems, that's what's going to really make this rocket a successful launch. And I know a lot of people are impatiently waiting for this rocket to launch because this is the third time that they're going to be trying to do it. But NASA takes its time so that it gets it right. Mm. Now, I think the other thing, you know, it's 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 worth um, it's worth saying, of course, is that this is a this is a new vehicle, isn't it? it? It's not like, you know, a car when you can get in one and get in the other and then sort of try it out, test it out and you know how to work it. Engineers are sort of feeling their way with this, aren't they? They have to learn its quirks. Yeah, it's a new vehicle. It has been in development since 2011 or so. Uh, so it's been worked on for a number of years. So in one way, a lot of people who have been working on it over the past decade are really familiar with this rocket. On the other hand, yeah, it hasn't actually launched. And so actually getting to see it launch and getting re ready for launch is something where we're all learning together the first time. And it's really you know, it's exciting and also nerve wracking to be able to actually see this rocket ready to launch for the first time. But it's been a decade in waiting. Mm. And it looks at the moment, Ariel, like we might have to wait just a little bit longer. Thank you very much for your time. And those pictures, as you can see, those live pictures from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral. OK, I want to take you straight uh, live to Cape Canaveral and the Space Centre there. I want you to listen in. We are less than 10 minutes, we believe, to yeah, launch. Go for core stage tank pressurization. The core stage tank is now pressuring, pressurizing to flight levels. And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiated. Seven, six, five. Four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. Five engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters. Extraordinary now. pictures here. After an absence of 50 years, NASA is returning to the moon. 
at Spring in Ariel Waldman, a NASA advisor. She joins us now from San Francisco, hearing this news, watching these pictures. Third time lucky, Ariel. What do you make of all of this? Uh, I am so overwhelmed. It's such a historic moment. Even though there's not astronauts on board this spacecraft, it's really our first step going back to the moon and eventually onto Mars. It's just incredible to actually be able to see it launch and launch successfully. You know, as I was saying, NASA is really good at taking its time and making sure it gets everything right so that when it does launch, it's just a beautiful sight. How will NASA and how will Artemis be making history here? This is absolutely historic because this is really our step to going back to the moon. So with this first launch of Artemis 1, it means that we're able to test the technologies that are then going to allow for a crew to do a flyby of the moon in 2024 and then eventually land on the moon in 2025. Beyond that, we're going to actually be able to build a lunar outpost, build a lunar gateway, which is essentially a lunar space station that's going to allow astronauts to easily go from lunar orbit down to the lunar surface. And then using all of that technology, we'll be able to reuse a lot of it in order to go on to Mars and really see how far we can go and what we can do and achieve when we get there. This is very different, isn't it, from the Apollo mission. According to NASA, this isn't about flags, this isn't about footprints, this is very much an international effort. Absolutely. And that's what I love so much about it and about the future of space exploration. We're at a point where we really want to accomplish bigger and better things for humanity. And to do so, no one country, no one company can do these things. It's really going to take international collaboration on an unprecedented scale in order to achieve the things that we want to do, like being able to live on the moon and eventually go to Mars and do a lot of amazing science there. And so having all these international partners for this first step with uh, the European Space Agency and the uh, JAXA Space Agency, as you mentioned, having all of those different partners coming together for this really just cinches the fact that we're going to need all of us working together in order to make these big things happen. Why has it taken so long for NASA to return to the moon? It was, the Apollo mission was 1972. Yeah, I mean, we could talk all night about that. There's all sorts of things that have happened. You know, the space shuttle was supposed to be able to accomplish more than it did, um, but faced a lot of challenges over the decades with different presidents. I think the reality is, is that space exploration takes a really long time to do, and it really takes a steady hand for many years in order to accomplish. Unfortunately, you know, the American government system is changing administrations every few years, and thus it's really challenging to keep a steady hand through multiple administrations so that we can actually go out and do these big exploratory missions. And so I think we're always up against trying to make the technology, the money and the politics come together at the same time in order to accomplish a lot of space exploration. Just how important and impressive is today's launch? How difficult is it to get a rocket out off the ground and into space? It's so incredibly difficult. I've been humbled over the years because, you know, as, as someone who's a, a millennial and grew up, you know, knowing that, yeah, we had landed on the moon, I always thought, you know, going on to Mars, um, you know, it was harder, but maybe not that much harder. Uh, I thought it wasn't a big deal. But as I've learned more, as I've worked with NASA and many different partners over the years, I've learned that it's actually incredibly difficult to be launching a rocket of this scale that can launch payloads of this size um, and accomplish the things that we're going to need to be having accomplished for going to Mars. I've learned that I shouldn't treat going to the moon and then Mars as, as a guarantee in my lifetime. It's something mm. that is going to really take a lot of people working together in order for it to happen. And we should Thank never you. take it for granted. Thank you very much, Ariel. Artemis One, now in space. Let's turn to another story because uh, in the past few minutes, the Artemis One rocket has lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral in Florida. The huge rocket is going into orbit 
It's going to orbit the moon with no passengers on board this time. It will be the first step in taking humans back to the moon, possibly by 2025 and then later on to Mars. Scientists are hoping this will be the third time lucky for the launch because they had to abandon two previous attempts. Now, watching this very closely, Ariel Waldman, a NASA advisor who's in San Francisco. Ariel, well, it, it was much delayed, but was it worth it when it finally happened? I mean, it's so worth it. You know, the, the good things are worth the wait, and this is so worth the wait because it just unlocks an entirely new era of space exploration. Just tell us about the challenges that we've had in the last few weeks. This rocket has gone back and forth. There have been two hurricanes and, and a variety of other setbacks. Yeah, this rocket has been through quite a lot, which is kind of like why I have a lot of faith in it now, because, you know, it's, it's, we've put it through its paces. Yeah, it survived a hurricane, it survived storms, we've had uh, leaks of like hydrogen leaks, we've had uh, insulation cracks. Um, today there was an ethernet port that wasn't working properly. You know, it's kind of seen it all and, and it, it's made it through. 10 weeks it's been uh, delayed uh, on and off uh, by uh, engineering difficulties and other factors, hasn't it? And, and now what is it going to be doing and, and why is it so significant that humans are going back to the moon. Yeah, so what this mission is going to be doing is in about six days time, it's going to arrive at the moon and go into a lunar orbit. And then it's gonna hang out in a lunar orbit for about three weeks before it comes back to earth, splashes down into the ocean and we recover the Orion capsule in order to really test out if we can uh, safely get humans back to earth from the moon. And onward from that is the Artemis II mission, which is going to be doing an orbit of the moon with humans on board. And beyond that, there will be Artemis III in 2025, which will hopefully be landing two people onto the surface of the moon. And we must point out, of course, that this is an uncrewed rocket. People may be wondering, this was done 50 years ago, humans going to the moon. What is the point of doing it again? now yeah totally fair question but really it's about really pushing the envelope further on exploration we are going to be going back to the moon hopefully to actually stay there longer and do a lot more operations that way we can test out a lot of the technologies that we need in order to get to mars and human space exploration is really all about asking how far can we go and what can we do and accomplish when we get there? And by going to the moon and having kind of a test playground of a lot of technologies and infrastructure that we need, we're going to be able to figure out how we can then get to Mars and do a lot of amazing science there. Just one final question, Ariel. This is the biggest rocket NASA has launched, is that correct? Yeah, it is a massive, massive rocket. And I think that's why it's so important is because to get to Mars and to do a lot of the things that we're wanting to do in space, we need to put a lot of stuff into space. And so by having this massive rocket, we can put a lot of supplies into that rocket and launch it up and uh, be able to accomplish really great things by having so much infrastructure in space. Yeah, it was a, a magnificent sight, an absolutely huge rocket and uh, the mission going well as far as we know to date. Thank you so much, uh, Aria Waldman, uh, staying up uh, to talk to us and to watch the launch there in San Francisco. Thank you. Thanks.